Okay, guys, I thought I had a video on this that I'm pretty sure I do somewhere. I remember making it at least. Um, so let me uh, just go through all this here. And uh, whoever pulled this code out, this is the correct code. Let me just copy it right there. And then actually, I don't want the whole thing. Let me just grab this bit of it. But let me show you how this works. And I've been doing this for a long time. Here's uh, my quick start blueprint where I have actually this is an image underneath here. You can use an image or you can use a gradient like they did in the other one. And the other thing is you have to understand is you can put a background image on anything that is an HTML element like we're working on right here. So what I did is I just came in to our line here. And so the first word is bold. The second word is bold and italicized. The third word is not anything. Fourth word, bold underline, and then bold and strike through. And I'm telling you that because as we come into the code now, actually, let me refresh the page because I was playing around with this some. So let's just refresh the page. And we'll come in here and we'll inspect this element. And what you're going to find is the first bit here is you got your bold for the large, and then you got your bold and italics for call. And then down here we have bold and we have auction as an underline and strike through as a headline. And people often ask, well, how can I make different words in my headline different colors? Well, the easy way to do it is you come in and you just say, okay, I'm gonna put a strike, let's say through the word headline. And then you come in here and let me kill my timer. And uh, what you do is, so you just you just put in your CSS, you put in the term strike, because that's what we're going after is, is strike here. Now, what you want to do when you're doing this for real, put in the CSS ID selector, because otherwise every word on the page that has strike on it or is, has a strike through on it will be affected by this. And of course, you don't want that. So but let's just say here, now we're going to go color of red. And now we just turn that color red. Now we come up here to underline and we can do the same thing. I'll just make a new element for underline and we'll just say color of blue and then all of the colors, there you go. So now let's go back in here. And what I like to do when I do this is I like to use strike throughs on everything because chances are I'm not gonna use a strike through anywhere else. So we're gonna say we want that as a strike through. We will save the page and we will reload the page. And then that way we will f affect all of this text. In their case, they used underline, but again, you're gonna use underline in other places. So I just go with what is gonna cause me the least uh, amount of trouble going forward. So now we have our code here. We got strike on the outside now this time, and then we have the bold stuff on the inside. So we're going to go after the strike element. And again, I'll just hit the plus button here to open up a new new element. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste in that code that they had. And there you go. And it's going to work just fine. Now, I already looked at this code once, and there's a couple of things I don't like about it. Uh, one of the things is they use background position minus 100%. So it's going to go down 100%. And I don't like that because you can use something as simple as bottom and it will put it at the bottom of the element that you are inside of. So we got that taken care of. And then on the repeat X, that means it wants to repeat in the horizontal or X direction. And that's not necessary because I think actually what it does is it breaks the code. And that's why it doesn't repeat. What you should have is repeat, no repeat. That would be a much better way to do that because if you turn it off, what it does is it, it doubles it up like that. So it's actually repeating one on top of each other is, is really what it's doing. So we're repeating here and we're at the bottom. Now, do we want this, um, the size, 100%, 30%? Yeah, I guess that all looks just fine. And um, one of the things I, when I did this earlier, I did it as just a headline element. And if you do it as just the headline element, it'll go the entire width. You see how wide the blue is on the screen? It'll go the entire width of the blue. But here it's only going the entire width of the strike because that's what we're designating here is we only want it going as far as that strike goes. Okay, so we got that and we got our gradient and there's really nothing else here to look at. You can change the height of it by changing the 30%, um, but the 100% you probably want to leave. I mean, unless you don't, let me see here. I mean, we can we can put it in and take, take some of the size down a little bit if you want for some reason. Um, you could do that. 
And then, um, but let's just put it back at 100% and 30, because then what I'm going to show you is how we can take this and instead of using the linear gradient that they're using here, of course, with the linear gradient too, what we can do here is we can change the color. And so now you got a nice colorful linear gradient there. Um, but what we're going to do instead, and oh, one thing um, that a couple of you picked up on, you got to make sure you do this. You got to make sure you do the text decoration thing. Um, otherwise, that strike stays on there. And obviously, you don't want that. But let me... Um, let me come up into here, and what we want to do is I want to grab a hold of this URL. This is an image that I have stored inside of ClickFunnels. It is just this underlying image right there. And so we're going to come in here, and where we got linear or background image, we're going to say URL, and we're going to pop that in there, and we're going to hit enter. And the problem is that that image is white. So let me come into the container and let's change the background color here. Let's change that to red. All right, now you get to see that image. So now let's come back down to our strike. And now we get to start playing around with this a little bit because, okay, let's say uh, I want it to be a little bit taller. So let's come in here and we're just going to give it more height. So we'll just beef this up a little bit and we'll say we're going to give it up to 50%. All right. Well, I don't like the fact that it's up here so high behind it. Well, what we can do is come down here where we got background position of bottom. What you could do instead of just saying bottom, you can say center bottom. Oops. And so it'll be at the, it'll be centered left to right and at the bottom. Center is always the default, and so you don't necessarily have to put it in. But now in our case here, we want to bring this down some. So we're going to leave it centered left and right, but we're going to give it a top margin now of 50 pixels. And so now it started to push it down some. Now is that down too far? I don't know. Let me, let's just click on this here, and we can bring it back up a little bit. We can bring it back down a little bit. You can see as it goes down, what starts to happen is it goes outside of the container. And so that's why it starts to disappear. So let's uh, pull it back up here a little bit. And now what I'm going to do is just pause for a second. Okay, I had to pause there for a second because I wasn't quite sure what I was going to have to do to be able to increase the height of this image if I had to do um, overflow visible on the outside or what. So what I did here, let's just push this down. And what I did is I came into the L headline element right outside of it right here. And I gave it... Okay, well, I thought I had the solution there as far as being able to give it more space at the bottom. And uh, so you can move this down further. But right offhand right now, I don't have the answer to that. I'll keep working on it, but I will cut this short here uh, because I showed you guys what you wanted to know, was, which was how to put that gradient in the bottom.